Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to be creating our first sketch. When we created our part document in the previous lesson, we landed in editing part mode as we see in the status bar. And by the way, if you don't see the status bar, select View from the Windows menu strip, scroll down, and select the status bar. We can create a sketch in a few different ways. In the Feature Manager design tree, we've got three planes available, front plane, top plane, and right plane. Currently, the three planes are hidden. We don't see them in the graphic space. When I mouse over the plane in the tree, I'm able to see the plane, though. We can make the planes visible if you prefer. Just right-click and then click on this glasses icon. Now the plane stays visible and it's conveniently labeled. To hide the plane, right-click again and click the glasses. And now the plane is no longer visible in the graphic area. To create a sketch, the plane doesn't have to be visible. I can just right-click on the plane and then click the first icon. That's the new sketch command. The orientation of the plane changes and Sketch 1 is now available for me in the tree. The status bar indicates that we're in editing sketch mode. At the top right of the workspace is what's called the confirmation corner. We click the arrow to accept the changes to our sketch. This is how we exit a sketch. We click the red X to disregard the changes and exit the sketch. Since we haven't created anything in our sketch yet, the sketch disappeared from the tree. Another way to create a sketch is to go to the Sketch tab and click the Sketch icon. If we click the Flyout arrow, this gives me the option to select from a 2D sketch or a 3D sketch. At this point, we're going to use a two-dimensional sketch. Now SolidWorks prompts us to select a plane. We're going to select the top plane. In the Feature Manager tree, we see that Sketch 2 has been created for us. In the status bar, we can see that we're in editing sketch mode. Let's click the red X. SolidWorks asks me for a confirmation. Do I want to disregard all the changes to the sketch? Click OK. And let's check out another way of creating a sketch. This time, I'll start from the Features tab. As you see, the only commands I've got available are the Extrusion and Revolve commands. Both of these features are what's known as sketch-based features. In other words, in order for me to create an extrude or a revolve, first I need a 2D profile or a sketch. So let's begin by activating the extruded boss base command. SolidWorks prompts me to select a plane for my sketch. Once again, I'm going to select the top plane. And Sketch 3 has been created. Here it is in the tree. Now let's activate the line tool. This arrow next to a tool indicates that the tool has got a subtool. You click the arrow to view the flyout options. In this case, I can choose between a line and a center line. Let's choose the line tool. The property manager for the line command opens on the left hand side of my screen. I click the icon to the left to see the feature manager. And let's try it out. When I move my mouse into the graphic area, my cursor becomes a pencil. You left click to place a point. When I move the mouse, there's a rubber band effect as SolidWorks waits for me to place the second point of my line. Left click a second time, and here is our first line. We can continue to drag our mouse a bit and left click. This gives us a line chain where the start point is coincident to the end point of the first line. To exit the line chain, just double click on the left mouse button. This will leave the line tool active so you can keep creating lines. Another way to end a line chain is to right click and select End Chain. If I want to create a single line, I can left click and hold the mouse down and then release it. This is how SolidWorks knows that I'm not trying to create a line chain. Let's create a line now between two of these points. When I mouse over this point, a little yellow circle appears. That's the symbol for a coincident relation. Left click to accept that relation. Now let's mouse over this point. Again, we see the coincident relation symbol. We left click to accept it and then release. And here's our line. To accept these changes and finish up with the line tool, we click the green check mark at the top of the property manager. Another way to do the same thing is to right click in the graphic area and choose select the top option there. As you can see, we've exited the line tool. Its property manager is now closed. But the status bar tells us that we're still in editing sketch mode. So let's activate the tool with a left click. 
We'll create some new lines now on the same sketch. Click OK to accept our changes and to exit the property manager. At this point, let's exit the sketch. Since we started our sketch from within the extrude command, SolidWorks automatically applies the default extrude settings and opens the extrude property manager. To cancel out of that manager, let's left click the red X and we're back in editing sketch mode. Let's select one of our lines and press delete on the keyboard. Now activate the line tool again and let's close the profile. Exit the sketch. Notice I'm still in the line tool mode when I exit the sketch. In the status bar, the status bar tells me that we're in editing part mode. In order to edit the sketch again, I'm going to right click on sketch 3 in the design tree and then click the edit sketch icon. It's the first icon displayed. We make our changes. And let's exit the sketch. I'm actually going to cancel out and disregard these changes. OK. Let's create a second sketch now. Right click on the top plane and select sketch. Let's use the line tool again. Close the profile. Exit the sketch. To hide the sketch, right click and select the glasses. Now our sketch is hidden. I see the preview of it, however, when I mouse over. If we want to show it again, just right click and click on the glasses. Now the sketch is visible in the graphic area. And this concludes our first lesson about sketching.